In this video, I'm going to show you how we can analyze the mission objectives, threats, and friendly assets in order to create a plan that we can later rehearse. This is an overview of the whole area of operations. Significant known points can be placed in MACE and viewed in armour. I've used known points on the red team to depict our enemy sites. In MACE I have the aggregate view activated so that we see the mill standard symbology for the enemy forces. In the layer manager I'm showing weapon ranges for surface to air missiles and AAA sites only. This gives us an appreciation of the interlocking integrated air defence system that we have over the target area. Also in the red threat inventory is a flight of four Su-27s carrying Archer and Alamo missiles based at a northern MOB. They're on 10 minutes ground alert from the detection of friendly forces in the AO. Now for the target area overview. In the armor label filter, I'm now showing both blue and red teams so that we can see the LZs. We can pan the camera around in the 3D view to get an appreciation of the terrain and possible holding sites nearby. In MACE, I've created a shape file using the mission drawing tools. The shape is a cylinder which represents a no fire zone over the target. It has 3D dimensions. Using the MACE Armour plugin, I can choose which shapes to display in armour. I can display the no fire zone in armour now, and we can see it here represented in red. Now let's look at the threats that are in close proximity to the target area. Most should be avoidable, especially the two SA-15 sites and the ZSU-234 sites, which are known not to come east of the Great Glen. However, the SA-17 site is definitely a factor, as are the two SA-20 sites that also cover the area. In armour, we can display a simple weapon engagement zone overlay. This shows the potentially interlocking weapon engagement zones that could be a factor in our mission but they require more analysis. Here using the MACE shape tools, I'm now displaying the entire area of operations as a yellow polygon in armour. Here we can see in the AO that our enemy forces have what looks like pretty good interlocking engagement zones from their air defence systems. We can also see our own air defence engagement zone from the Patriot battery that is located just south of our main operating base. Let's take a look at our blue forces lay down now. Our SF insertion force is at MOB Ouija, Glasgow Airport. It consists of two CH-47s escorted by two AH-64s. We can display and edit the weapon loadout for the AH-64s in MACE like this. Also at the MOB is a HIMARS battery. And we've been allocated six of their long-range munitions for the duration of this mission. When the time comes, we can decide on the target and the time on target using the MACE call for fire form. For the duration of our mission, we have four F-35s based out of Northern Ireland's Belfast MOB, providing defensive counter-air. There will be continuous jamming support from a flight of two EA-18s. We can see what threats are in their threat library by opening their weapons and equipment page in MACE and looking at their jammer properties. 
we can add any new threats either based on threat name or threat parameters such as PRI and frequency bands. On patrol in the southwest is HMS Daring, armed with Tomahawk land attack missiles. One TLAM has been allocated for use in this mission and it is anticipated that it will be used to remove one of the SA-20 sites. In MACE we can allocate the TLAM target and set a TOT such that MACE will automatically launch the TLAM in time to follow its waypoint route and hit the target. If we zoom out in MACE and apply blue range rings for aircraft shooting at air targets we can see we have a small problem. Our F-35's range rings are insufficient to provide adequate air cover for our SF insertion package if that southern SA-20 site remains active. The southern SA-20 site will become the target for the TLAM. Let's take a look at that SA-17 site in the middle of our AO that will definitely affect our approach to target. Using the mission rehearsal toolbox in MACE, we'll display a radar propagation plot for the target tracking radar on the SA-17 site. The plot will be for our expected ingress altitude and our worst case radar cross section that we can specify. By doing this, we can see some potential gaps in coverage of the site. I can do the same again for the other two sites that cannot be avoided, which are the two SA-20 sites. We must assume that our TLAM attack might not be successful on the southern SA-20 site and plan to avoid it. So now we can see what that looks like in terms of total coverage for the enemy air defence sites that could be a factor on our ingress. It looks like there are potentially some gaps that we could exploit by going straight up the middle here. So we can put in a rough waypoint route for our SF insertion package now. We can display the route in the 3D view in armour to get a better appreciation of where it's going. Although there may be gaps in the integrated air defence system for our SF insertion team to exploit, we should still plan to destroy the southern SA-20 site so that our F-35s can provide air coverage against the Su-27 cap. We can program the target location, time on target and waypoint route for the TLAMs. We'd like to coordinate our TLAM strike with the time at which our SF insertion package crosses into the AO. We can check that by looking at the waypoints for the insertion package and seeing what the expected arrival time is. The TLAM will require protected airspace. I've already pre-made a shapefile for this TLAM corridor based on the original waypoint route. I can display it in both MACE and ARMOR, as we did before for the no-fire zone and the AO. We can see by panning out in ARMOR that this presents no airspace conflicts for any of our assets at the moment. I've chosen an area for the EA-18 jammers to operate. This location should give adequate coverage to both the SF insertion team running north and our F-35s against the southwestern SA-20 site. As before, I've constructed a piece of 3D airspace in MACE that can also be displayed in armour so that we can check for deconfliction. Although we're planning for all air defence sites to remain active, it would be better if we could destroy them. So just as we have a TLAM strike planned against the southern SA-20 site, we choose to use our HIMARS attack against the SA-17 site in the central part of the AO. I can use the MACE call for fire form to specify the target. I can also specify and later refine a time on target for the strike. The form also gives us useful airspace deconfliction information such as the top height, the range to target and the bearing to target of the attack. This allows us to construct a goalpost plane piece of airspace within MACE that can also be displayed in armour to check for deconfliction. 
Now I'm going to conduct some analysis in the target area. After the SF insertion team has been dropped off, we need a safe place for the CH-47s to hold nearby where they can remain in radio communications with the teams and be able to come back and pick them up at a moment's notice. This nearby lock looks like it has potential, but I'm using the mission rehearsal tools to check coverage of radio transmission and whether they can be engaged by the nearby SA-17 site. Starting with the radio propagation tool, I've placed a radio at the LZ of a certain transmission power and frequency. Using the mission rehearsal tool, I can now plot its propagation for a receiver at a particular height with a particular sensitivity. I can compare this with the radar propagation plot from the nearby SA-17 site. What I'm aiming for is a height where the CH-47s can be guaranteed reception of messages from the LZ, but will not be detectable or engageable by the SA-17 site. This confirms that this lock is probably a pretty good place for the CH-47s to hold. Again, I can build a piece of 3D airspace in MACE that can be displayed in armour so that we can better understand the holding area. I can also see by panning the armour camera around and switching to an above ground level view that actually at the holding altitude there is no direct line of sight to the SA-17 site. Our initial route looks sound in terms of its approach to target, coverage from the jammers and airspace deconfliction from the TLAM and HIMARS strikes. It's now time to refine the route. MAZE allows us to import and export routes in different formats such as GPX and CRD. I can place and refine waypoints to ensure that the SF flight remains in the low ground or I can import a route that I've made earlier just to speed this up. I can see the waypoint route displayed nicely here in 3D in armour. But before we do a route preview, there's further analysis we can make of the risk to flight on the route using the mission rehearsal tools. By using the route evaluation tool, I can see an easily color-coded route that describes my risk against all of the threats in the target area. These colour codes are also transferred to armour so we can see where the problem parts of the route lie. We can make live waypoint adjustments and the route evaluation will complete again showing us if our adjustments have made any difference to our route. We can combine this by running the mission rehearsal tool on the SA-17 site to re-show its radar propagation plot. We can get as close as we need and make more refined adjustments to make the route safer from the SA-17 site. Now, I could re-plan that route so that it went closer to the lock. But as we don't know the locations of those ZSU-234s at the time of our mission start, and they're deemed to be highly mobile, I've decided to stick with the current route as it stands. However, it would be good to do some what-if analysis if we are engaged at the riskiest part of the route. Using the mission rehearsal tool again, I can perform missile flyouts against certain threats with certain maneuvers to certain locations on the route. We can watch these flyouts in both armor and mace and see the results in the mission rehearsal tool window. Although we're going to do a full mission rehearsal shortly, 
Before we do that, we can check our route by flying it in armour using the armour camera. We can display the armour camera in Mace as well so we know where we are on the 2D view. This way we can see whether certain waypoints need adjusting to keep us squarely in the low ground for example. We can also see the sort of things that we'll see en route that will help us pick the right valley to fly down or towns to avoid. What I've done in this plan is use the mace and armour analysis tools to analyse the threats, the target area and other factors to come up with a plan for destruction of the threats and the safest route if those threats weren't destroyed. However, there is a tool in MACE that will analyse all of the threats and plan a route for you. It's called the MACE Assisted Route Creation Tool, or MARC. Let's see what MARC comes up with for our route. With MARC, you can set a start point and an objective. You can also score the threats in terms of priority, in terms of their avoidance. You can set broad factors such as we want the shortest route or we want the safest route and we can adjust our scores on things like being detected or weapon tracking or avoiding weapon engagement zones on the right hand side. When we run mark it takes a little bit of time to create a cache of all the elevation data in the route versus all of the radar propagation data for the threats and it will present what it thinks is the optimum route based on your parameters. In this case, Mark has suggested a route that goes up the Great Glen. It doesn't know, as we do from our intelligence briefs, that those ZSU-234s could be anywhere along the Great Glen. So I've decided to stick with my route for now. Now we're going to rehearse the mission and see how our plan fares against the enemy. I've started the mission. Our assets are starting to move. I'm displaying radar beams in armour and we can see them on their scans. We can also see the route waypoints as before in the planning stage for our SF insertion package. I have entity labels displayed for both the red and blue teams. I can change them from a compact to a detailed view. The background of the label pulsates if that entity is being jammed. It pulsates the colour of the entity that is jamming it. So here we can see effective jamming of the SA-20 site from our EA-18 assets. Here we can see our SF insertion flight already on the move making their way to the border. Our F-35 foreship is airborne and moving forward to as far as they'll go until the SA-20 site has been disabled. I can check when the TLAM is supposed to launch to hit the 0817 TOT which coincides with the SF insertion team crossing the border. The TLAM has launched on time to hit its TOT to coincide with the helicopters crossing the border. We can see it making its way down the corridor we planned for it. Once we have confirmation that the SA-20 site is disabled, the F-35 flight will be able to move forward up to the edge of the northern SA-20 MES. The HIMARS battery has a three minute time of flight. We still have 11 and a half minutes to impact to coincide with the TLAM strike and the SF flight crossing the border. I'm going to increase the mission speed to get to the next event. At three minutes to go to the border crossing, we can see the SF flight making their way towards the border. At this point, our HIMARS munitions have launched. We can see them ascending to their very high transit altitude following the line of our goalpost airspace. We can see their target lines on MACE as red lines extending from the munition to the target. 
Here we can see the ammunition making its way towards the target and our SF insertion flight making their way towards the border below it. In the target area there is something emitting. I've placed a BMP3 with a GPS Mekaner which will spoof the position of the GPS guided munitions as they approach. At 30 seconds to the TOT we can see our TLAM approaching the SA-20 site on the left hand side. On the right hand side we can see the HIMARS ammunition approaching the SA-17 site but their target positions are being disrupted. The HIMARS have missed the target. It's a good job we planned to avoid the SA-17 site. However, at least the SA-20 site fire control radar is down. So now our F-35s can move up to the border of the northernmost SA-20 site. Our helicopter team has crossed the border triggering the ground alert for the Su-27s at MOB Lossiemouth. In 10 minutes time they will launch to intercept us. I've increased the mission speed and we can see the F-35s pushing north towards the border of the northern SA-20 site. We can see their air weapons range now comfortably covers the ingress of the SF insertion team. 10 minutes after the AO crossing the SU-27s launch and turn northwest to get to their operating height. Our SF team is now well inside enemy territory and following their route as planned. Happily, we can see by the flashing blue label that the snowdrift acquisition radar for the SA-17 site is still being effectively jammed by our EA-18s. Here we can see the SU-27s now committing south to try and find our SF insertion team. As soon as those SU-27s cross into the AO, our F-35s are authorised to destroy them. As they cross, we see the F-35s turn to commit. The F-35s launch their AMRAAM missiles, but we can also see that the northern SA-20 site has managed to launch a missile at the F-35s. We can see by opening windows on each of the missiles, the AMRAAM and the SA-20, what their current targets are. The SU-27s have launched their missiles before turning cold. The SA-20 still has one of the F-35s as an active target. But it soon loses it. The AMRAMs have gone active and the SC-27s are being guided to. The SA-20 has lost guidance and missed the F-35s as they turn cold and move out of the weapon engagement zone. As this air war has been going on above them, the SF insertion flight have still been continuing along their route as planned, undisturbed. The SF flights are approaching the most vulnerable part of their route as identified in our planning and analysis process. The snowdrift acquisition radar for the SA-17 site is still being jammed. We can see by the beam viewer that one of the helicopters has been acquired by the acquisition radar of the SA-17 site. By opening the properties on the SA-17 site, we can see things like track confidence in azimuth and elevation for each of the targets. 
the sources of the target tracker varying between the on-site SA-17 radars and that of the northern SA-20 site that is getting occasional glimpses of the targets from its chairback TT radar. Currently the site is unable to engage because the targets are not within the weapon engagement zone of the missile, which is calculated based upon the approach speed of the aircraft versus the capabilities of the missile itself. It has lost the lock and our flight continue on their route. We can open their RWR and see the indications on it for the various bits of energy that are hitting the aircraft. Happily, our aircraft are through the worst risk area of their route and on final approach to their target area. We can see that the mechanised infantry company on the west side of the lock has been alerted to our presence and is making its way south to cross the lock and then it will come back up to the target. This is one of the targets that the escorting AH-64s will engage once the CH-47s are at the LZ. We can place ourselves inside the cockpits of any of the aircraft to get the cockpit point of view, but just bear in mind Mace is using a constructive aerodynamic engine to fly the aircraft and won't be as smooth as you would be. If you have a joystick connected, you can take over manual control at any point. As our package approaches the target area, the AHs peel off and start to engage. The first engagement is of the nearest ZSU-234 site. After the engagement, both AH-64s proceed south to engage the BMPs as part of the mechanised infantry company. During this time, the CH-47s make their way to the LZ, they land, and their passengers disembark to make their way to the target area. Once the SF teams have disembarked, the CH-47s lift and proceed to their holding area in the lock to the east as planned. The AH continue to engage the enemy targets approaching our target area. Once the SF team is complete, the CH-47s return and pick up the team before joining up with the other AH and returning to base. We can practice this mission as many times as we want, varying all the different factors that could have an effect. Using BSI's Discord software, we can record the entire mission and play it back for analysis afterwards in intimate detail. MACE allows us to log lots of different events to the network log. We can click on the individual events and skip to that time in the timeline to see what happened. We can also use the MACE event viewer to track the mission as it unfolded and see what actually happened. We can see here, for example, that although it looks like the SA-20 missile came very close to hitting these F-35s, it was actually significantly lower than their altitude. You can pretty much use any of the analysis tools we use in MACE at runtime in this after action review, although a few things aren't recorded.
This demonstration has given you a good idea of what you can achieve in terms of mission analysis, planning, rehearsal, and post-mission analysis using the BSI tools of MACE, Armour, and Discord. For more information, please follow us on LinkedIn and check out our YouTube channel where we regularly post new capability videos. If you'd like a demonstration in person or to talk in more detail about your requirements, please contact us at support at bssim.com.